Hey guys, good evening and welcome back again to your Unacademy Need English channel. I hope all of you are doing great, having a good time. So my dear students, quickly, let me know in the chats if all of you can hear me, if I'm perfectly audible and visible to every one of you. Quickly, let me know in the chats with the thumbs ups. Welcome back people, welcome back, welcome back. So let me know quickly in the chats if all of you can hear me properly, if I'm perfectly audible, visible to you. I'm doing good guys, I'm doing good. Thank you so much, thank you so much. I'm doing good. Uh, please take D and F block after electrochemistry. Okay. Well, I have planned some three chapters basically. Uh, we shall be completing first of all the electrochemistry and after that we will be going, we'll be going into the atomic structure and after atomic structure we shall be doing periodic classification. Maybe after that I'll be doing the D and F block elements for you as well. Okay. I think, I believe, I'm perfectly audible, visible to everyone, yeah? So my dear students, as you all must be knowing, today we are going to start one of the most important chapters of your physical chemistry. And the name of the chapter, as you would have already seen, it's electrochemistry, right? I would say every year in your NEET examination, almost some three to four questions are asked from this particular chapter, okay? And I shall be doing this particular chapter exactly from the basics, from the scratch we shall be starting and first of all we shall cover all the concepts that all the problem patterns which can be asked from this particular chapter as well. The way we covered the other chapters in the similar way we are going to start from the scratch and slowly slowly we shall be scaling up the things as well. Okay. So are you guys ready for it? No, no. Electrochemistry is not difficult. It's not difficult. If you know the basics, right? If your basics is clear, definitely it's going to be very, very, very easy for all of you. So, before starting the session, let me tell you, I have allocated some three sessions for this particular chapter. So, in three sessions, I will be covering this whole chapter, Electrochemistry, and every session will have three hours of duration. Okay? So, should we start then? Should we start? Should we start? Are you guys ready for it? Are you guys ready for it? Yes. Perfect. My dear students, before starting this chapter, there are a few basic terminologies which you must know. And those basic terminologies are from the chapter redox reactions. So I'll try to cover all the terms which are from the chapter redox reactions, but we use those terms in this particular chapter. So let's try to cover those basics first, and then I'll be starting this particular chapter, electrochemistry, right? Because redox, electro, they are interlinked. Let's get to know all the terminologies of redox which are frequently used in this particular chapter. Right? And the first terminology with which we are going to start, that is something which you call as oxidation. That is something which you call as oxidation. I'm sure majority of you guys will be already knowing what oxidation is all about. Oxidation, as per modern definition, is defined as loss of electrons. My dear students, any species which is going to lose the electrons, we say that particular species undergoes oxidation. Any species which undergoes loss of electrons, basically, which, are, which is going to lose the electrons, we are going to say that particular species is undergoing oxidation. What it means exactly, before that, I'll tell you one more thing. Whenever in a chemical reaction, you need to check whether a substance is undergoing oxidation or reduction, what you guys are going to do at that time, just remember one simple point. Increase in the oxidation state. Increase in the oxidation state of an element is termed as oxidation. Whenever you see an element is undergoing increase in the oxidation state. You'll directly say that particular element is undergoing oxidation. Now let's get to know what it exactly means. Have a look people. For example, for example, I have got an element M, for example. This is the element M. I'm assuming this M is losing, let's say one electron. 
and it is getting converted into m positive right so i'm assuming that this m it has lost one electron it is getting converted into m positive now my dear students just try to analyze one simple thing if i ask you what is the charge present on this metal here what is the charge present on this element here it is zero what is the charge present on this m here it is plus one tell me one thing from zero to plus one what it means has the oxidation state of m increased or decreased i would say the oxidation state of m is increasing from zero to plus one and that particular element whose oxidation state increases during the reaction we say that particular species is undergoing oxidation so i would say this m is undergoing oxidation in this particular case right as simple as that so i've taken the element m it is losing one electron getting converted into m positive the initial the initial oxidation of this m the initial oxidation state of this m, that is zero final oxidation state is plus plus one so zero to plus one means increase in the oxidation state and increase in the oxidation state is something which we call as oxidation and what is oxidation loss of electrons so you can categorically say this m has lost one electron and got converted into m positive right similarly there's a term called as reduction i'm sure all of you must be familiar with this particular term as well so dear students how do you define the term reduction if oxidation involves loss of electrons then i would say reduction is going to involve the gain of electrons reduction is going to involve the gain of electrons number one number two decrease in the oxidation state of an element decrease in the oxidation state of an element is termed as reduction as well whenever you see the oxidation state of any element decreasing with time do remember that particular species will be undergoing reduction for example let's say i have got an element a and i'm giving one electron to this element this a after gaining one electron let's assume that it's getting converted into a negative right so first of all is this process involving gain of electrons absolutely this particular process is involving gain of electrons so this particular process is something which i'll be calling as reduction right now at the same time if i ask you what is the oxidation state of a here what is the charge on a here it is zero what is the charge on this particular a it is minus one check it out whether the oxidation state of a is increasing or decreasing zero to minus one zero to minus one means decrease in the oxidation state and decrease in the oxidation state is something which you call as reduction so i must say this a is undergoing reduction over here and reduction as you already know that involves gain of electrons so i must say this a is gaining one electron and getting converted into a negative i hope this particular basic scenario is clear to everyone right so you got to know what oxidation is all about you got to know what reduction is all about now my dear students you might have heard about something called as oxidizing agent and reducing agent let's get to know what oxidizing agent is what reducing agent is and how do we identify them in a chemical reaction let's get to know about that this again completely basics only okay perfect guys there is a term called as oxidizing agent there is a term called as oxidizing agent oxidizing agent is also called as oxidant it is also called as oxidant now how do you define the term oxidizing agent my dear students oxidizing agent is the one or i'll say that species that species which oxidizes others that species which oxidizes others but itself undergoes reduction but itself undergoes reduction that particular species which is going to oxidize others and itself will undergo reduction will be calling that particular species as oxidizing agent what it means you will get the idea in some time before making you understand that i'll be writing the definition of reducing agent as well reducing agent or you'll be calling it as the reductant as well you'll be calling this as the reductant as well 
Now, how do you define the reducing agent? And how do you define the reducing agent? Let's get to know about that. Reducing agent, it is that species. It is that species which, which reduces others. That species which reduces others, but itself undergoes oxidation. So that particular species which is going to reduce others, but itself is undergoing oxidation, I'll be calling that as the reducing agent. Let's try to understand these two definitions over here. Try to understand what exactly I'm going to say. This is something important which I'm going to tell you now. See guys, for example, I've got a reaction and the reaction is like this. Zinc solid plus copper dipositive aqueous. Let's say it gives zinc dipositive aqueous plus copper solid. Let's assume this is the reaction. Okay. Now, if I ask you, what is the charge present on this zinc over here? It is zero. That means its oxidation state is zero. The charge present on copper right here is plus two. That means its oxidation state is plus two. The charge present on this zinc over here is plus two. Its oxidation state plus two. The charge present on copper is zero. Its oxidation state is zero. Now, my dear students, I want you to check exactly whether the oxidation state of zinc is increasing or decreasing. What do you think? I would say the initial oxidation state of zinc is zero. The final oxidation state of zinc is plus two. So I would say the oxidation state of zinc is increasing with time. And any such species whose oxidation state increases with time, we say that particular species is undergoing oxidation. So you got to know the zinc, since its oxidation state is increasing, so it is undergoing oxidation. If it is undergoing oxidation, definitely it will be losing the electrons, right? It will be losing the electrons. And let me tell you, that particular species, which itself undergoes oxidation, that is something which you call as a reducing agent or reductant. So you identified in this particular reaction, your zinc solid that is behaving like the reducing agent, right? Now at the same time, check it out. Whether the oxidation state of copper is increasing or decreasing. I would say the oxidation state of copper is changing from plus two to zero. What is it? Increase or decrease? It is decrease in the oxidation state. Plus two to zero. Decrease in the oxidation state. And decrease in the oxidation state is something which you call as a reduction. So I would say this copper dipositive is undergoing a reduction. Yeah. And my dear students, that particular species which undergoes reduction, that will be involving gain of electrons. So I would say this copper dipositive will be, the, will be gaining certain electrons. Right. Now you must be thinking from where those electrons are going to come. Those electrons are going to come from the zinc which is undergoing oxidation. Zinc is losing electrons and copper dipost will be definitely gaining electrons, right? And dear students, that particular species which undergoes reduction, that's something which you call as oxidizing agent. I hope this particular thing is clear to everyone. Now you should be able to identify which reactant in a particular reaction behaves like the oxidizing agent and which reactant in a chemical reaction it behaves like the reducing agent. Is this clear to everyone? Quickly in the chats. Let me know quickly in the chats. This was example number one. Let's have a look on example number two as well. See guys. For example, I'm writing a reaction like this. H2 gas plus H2 gas plus 2 times Ag positive. Let's say it gives. These are some reactions which I'm writing as such. Right? So let's say it gives 2 times Ag positive aqueous and 2 times Ag solid. Let's say this is the reaction which I've taken into consideration. And in this particular reaction, I need to check which particular species is the oxidizing agent and which one is the reducing agent. Let's get to know about that. If I ask you what is the charge on this hydrogen over here, you'll say it's zero. Charge on silver over here, it is plus one. Charge on this hydrogen over here, it's plus one. Charge on this silver over here, it's zero. Right? Now check it out. Whether the oxidation state of hydrogen is increasing or decreasing. From zero to plus one. Increase in the oxidation state. 0 to plus 1, increase in the oxidation state. And increase in the oxidation state is something which you call as oxidation. So this H2 is undergoing oxidation here. And the one which undergoes oxidation, that's something which you'll be calling as reducing agent. In the similar way, check, about the, check the oxidation state of this particular silver. 
प्लस वन प्लस वन टू जीरो प्लस वन टू जीरो मीन डिक्रीज इन द ऑक्सीडेशन स्टेट एंड डिक्रीज इन द ऑक्सीडेशन स्टेट इज समथिंग विच यू कॉल एस रिडक्शन decrease in the oxidation state is something which you call as reduction and that particular species which undergoes reduction that's something which you will be calling as oxidizing agent right so let me know quickly in the chats if you got to know how to identify oxidizing and reducing agent quickly my dear students in the chats quickly in the chats everyone yeah quickly quickly Narmada, watch the redox reaction chapter first, right? And mole concept and equilibrium, right? I think you are here for the first time. Quickly, let me know in the chats. All the things are clear. Perfect. One more example, and with with this, we'll start the chapter exactly. I'm writing the reaction for example, M N O four negative. Plus F A di positive. Let's say it's giving M N di positive, and with this you are writing F A tri positive as well. Now let me know in the chats which species will be undergoing oxidation and which species will be undergoing reduction. Quickly, quickly, people in the chats. Quickly, people in the chats. See, guys, have a look. First of all. If I ask you what is the oxidation state of this manganese over here, you will have to calculate it. It's going to be X. Oxygen shows minus two oxygen state. There are four oxygen atoms. Net charge over here is minus one. So the value of X will come out to be plus seven. So I would say this manganese oxidation state is plus seven in this case. What is the charge present on this iron over here? It's plus two. Charge present on the manganese, it's plus two, and charge present on iron right here is plus three. Right? Now check exactly. Whether the oxidation state of manganese is increasing or decreasing, plus seven to plus two, decrease in the oxidation state. Decrease in the oxidation state is something which we call as a reduction. So I would say this MnO4 negative is undergoing reduction in this particular case, and that particular species which undergoes reduction, that is something which you'll be calling as oxidizing agent. As simple as that. In the similar way, check the oxidation state of iron. It is changing from plus two to plus three. Plus two to plus three means increase in the oxidation state. Increase in the oxidation state is something which you call as oxidation, and that particular species which undergoes oxidation, that's something which I'll be calling as the reducing agent. Quickly, let me know in the chats if all these things are clear. Quickly, my dear students, do remember one thing: no doubt the oxidation state of manganese is decreasing, but you will never say that manganese is undergoing reduction. You will say this whole compound is undergoing reduction. You will say this whole compound is undergoing reduction, right? Okay. Perfect. Is it clear, people? One last example. One last example. Let me give you so that I'll get that satisfaction. You got to know how to identify the oxidizing and reducing agent. One last example with this. Let's say I'm running the reaction like this: Cr two O seven di negative. Cr two O seven di negative plus S N di positive. Let's say it gives chromium tri positive plus S N plus four. This is the reaction which I mentioned over here. Now, my dear students, I would want you guys to, I would want you guys to check which reactant among the two is going to be the oxidizing agent and which one is going to be the reducing agent. How exactly you guys are going to check? First of all, I'll calculate the oxidation state of this particular chromium. Right, it has to be two x minus fourteen is equal to minus two, so the value of x will come out to be plus six. Right? What is the oxidation state of this tin over here? It's plus two. Oxidation state of chromium, it's plus three. Oxidation state of tin, it is plus four. Right? Now check whether the oxidation state of chromium is increasing or decreasing. Plus six to plus three. Plus six to plus three. Decrease in the oxidation state. Decrease in the oxidation state is something which we call as reduction. So I would say this particular species, this Cr two O seven di negative, it is undergoing reduction, and that species which undergoes reduction, that is going to behave like the oxidizing agent. Similarly, plus two to plus four, plus two to plus four, again it is increase in the oxidation state. Increase in the oxidation state is something which we call as oxidation, and that particular species which undergoes oxidation, 
That's something which I'll be calling as a reducing agent. Perfect? Yeah? Right, people? Manpreet, this is class 12th. Class 12th. I think this is chapter number 4, I believe. Perfect, people? All right. Now, if all these basic things are clear to everyone, let's try to go into the first topic of the electrochemistry chapter. So are you ready for that? Are you all ready for that? Are you all ready for that? <laughs> Perfect, guys. So let's get going. Let's get started. The first topic which I'm mentioning on the screen that is electrochemical cell. Electrochemical cell. Now, what this electrochemical cell exactly is all about? What is electrochemical cell? Let me tell you, electrochemical cell, it is the device basically. The device which converts the device which converts which converts either chemical energy into electrical energy or electrical energy into chemical energy so electrochemical cell it is basically a device which is going to convert either chemical energy into electrical or electrical into chemical. How exactly? I'll let you know in some time. Right? How exactly this is going to happen? How chemical energy is going to get converted into electrical energy? How electrical energy will be converting into chemical energy? That's something which we shall be discussing in detail in this particular chapter. Right? Perfect. Now, this electrochemical cell it's actually of two types. This electrochemical cell, it's actually of two types. My dear students, one is called as galvanic cell or you call it as the voltaic cell as well. Galvanic or voltaic cell. Number two, that is something which you call as electrolytic cell. That's what you call as electrolytic cell. So what is a galvanic cell? And what is the electrolytic cell? How do we define them? Right now, I'll be just giving you the definition and some basic points which you need to remember first of all before going into the details of this particular chapter. So basically, in this chapter, we have to see exactly how Daniel's cell works, right? How Daniel's cell works, how electrolytic cell works. These are two vast topics which we have to cover in this particular chapter only. But right now, I'll just give you the definition of these two cells. Then we'll go into the details one by one. Yeah? Okay. My dear students, when I talk about the galvanic cell, galvanic cell, it is a device, it is a device which converts, it is a device which converts chemical energy into what? Into electrical energy. It is a device which converts chemical energy into electrical energy. Point number one. How exactly? We shall be doing, we shall be discussing that in some time. Number one. Number two, in case of galvanic cells, what happens exactly? Let me tell you, in case of galvanic cells, spontaneous cell reactions take place. Spontaneous cell reactions will take place in case of galvanic cell. How exactly? Again, you'll get to know in some time. Number three, number three. For any process to be spontaneous, you must be knowing for any process to be spontaneous, delta G for the system at constant pressure and temperature, that has to be negative. So I would say if spontaneous cell reactions will be taking place in the galvanic cell, so I would say its delta G for the reaction will be less than zero. And my dear students, in this galvanic cell, I'll be using two electrodes. One I'll be calling as anode, another one I'll be calling as cathode. One I'll be calling as anode, another one I'll be calling as cathode. Dear students, remember one simple thing. The rod of the anode, the rod of the anode in galvanic cell, it will carry the negative charge. And the rod of the cathode in the galvanic cell, it will be carrying the positive charge. 
What is the logic behind that? Why the rod of anode will carry negative? Rod of cathode will carry positive. There's a logic behind that. Again, that's something we shall be discussing in some time. Right? And do remember one simple thing. At anode, always oxidation takes place, which involves loss of electrons. And at cathode, always reduction takes place, which involves gain of electrons. So these are a few basic pointers which you need to know, right? Which we shall be discussing one by one in detail in this particular chapter. Related to what? Related to galvanic cell. Okay. Similarly, my dear students, electrolytic cell, this is one more topic which we have to cover in detail. But right now, let me give you certain basic things about this electrolytic cell as well. Let me tell you this electrolytic cell, it is just the reverse. It converts electrical energy into chemical energy. It converts electrical energy into chemical energy. And in this particular cell, the cell reactions, the cell reactions are carried out, are carried out by supplying, cell reactions are carried out by supplying external voltage. External voltage. Again, what that means? Keep it as such. We shall be discussing in some time. At the same time, if cell reactions are carried out by supplying external voltage, I shall be saying that cell reactions are non-spontaneous in this particular case. So delta G has to be positive. Right? Similarly, in this particular cell, I'll be using two electrodes. One will be calling as anode and one we shall be calling as cathode. But over here, there's only one difference. The rod of the anode here carries a positive charge and rod of the cathode here carries the negative charge. Why it happens? Again, there's a logic we shall be discussing in some time. But one thing that is certain that at anode always oxidation is going to take place and at cathode always the reduction is going to take place. So these are few points which you should remember first of all. Okay. Right. These are some points which you should remember first of all. Right people. Now, now our actual topic in the today's session that will be exactly how this galvanic cell works. How exactly it converts chemical energy into electrical energy. That will be our first topic actually in the today's discussion. So let me know first of all, whatever I have discussed till now, is every single thing clear? Is every single thing clear quickly? Yeah? I just gave you the overview of the things. I did not teach anything in detail yet. Now it's the time to see things in detail. But before that, I would want you guys to let me know if every single thing is clear. Quickly, people. Everyone. Everyone. All right. Now, people. <clears throat> now we will let me tell you one important thing the cell which we have to discuss that is something which you call as galvanic cell right the typical example of the galvanic cell the most common example of the galvanic cell that is daniel cell so daniel cell what is it it is the most typical example it is the most common example of the galvanic cell what this daniel cell exactly is going to do this Daniel cell, since it is the most common example of the galvanic cell, this Daniel cell, it is going to convert chemical energy into what? It is going to convert chemical energy into electrical energy. Now the point is how? How this Daniel cell, which is the most common example, which is the most common example of the galvanic cell, how it's going to convert chemical energy into electrical energy? That is the discussion here, right? But again, before that, few points which you must know. See guys, first of all, before going into the details of the Daniel cell, if I ask you how electrodes are made, you should be exactly knowing how electrodes exactly are made. For example, people, let's say I have to make a zinc electrode. How do I make a zinc electrode? How do I make it? Similarly, if I ask you, how do we make the copper electrode? How copper electrodes exactly are made? Let's get to know about this. How electrodes are made first of all. 
then only you can understand the concept of the Daniels. So try to understand what exactly I'm going to say. My dear students, since we are going to make, we are planning to make the zinc electrode. So what I'll be doing, I'll be taking a container. Let's assume this is the container. And in this container, I'm going to keep a solution. I'm going to keep a solution containing, containing the salt of zinc. For example, I have kept zinc sulfate in the container. Let's say I have kept zinc sulfate in the container. My dear students, this zinc sulfate, since it's an electrolyte, so it would have got dissociated into its ions, zinc di positive and SO4 di negative, right? So basically in this particular container, you have got zinc di positives as well as SO4 di negatives. So these are the two types of ions which are present in the container. Now at the same time, since I have to make a zinc electrode, so what I'll be doing now? Now my dear students, I'll be placing a zinc rod. I'll be placing, I'll be dipping a zinc rod. This is the zinc rod. This is the zinc rod. So what exactly I have done? I have placed zinc rod into a solution which contains its own ions. Own ions means which contains zinc dipositive ions. Right? Whenever you need to make an electrode of certain metal, what exactly you need to do? You need to take the rod of that particular metal and you have to insert that rod into the solution which contains the ions of the same metal. That's what I have done over here. I have taken zinc rod. I have inserted the zinc rod into a solution which contains the ions of zinc. My dear students, this whole setup over here, I'll be calling as zinc electrode. This whole setup I'll be calling as the zinc electrode. Right? In the similar way, let's say you have to make the copper electrode. How exactly you'll be making the copper electrode? Again, you'll be doing the same procedure. You'll be taking a container. Let's assume this is the container. And my dear students, in this particular container, I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep a solution. I'm going to keep a solution containing an electrolyte, right? And that electrolyte should be the salt of copper. Let's say that electrolyte is copper sulfate. Let's assume that electrolyte is copper sulfate. So my dear students, this copper sulfate, it would have got dissociated completely into its ions, for example. Its ions are cup, copper di positive and SO4 di negative. So in this particular solution, we have got copper di positive ions. We have got SO4 di negative ions as well. Now what exactly I should be doing? Since I'm going to make the electrode of copper. So what I'll be doing, I'll be taking a copper rod and I'll be inserting that copper rod into a solution. I'll be inserting this copper rod into a solution containing its own ions. So this whole setup I'll be calling as electrode. Isn't it simple? Isn't it simple people? Right? So for example, whenever you need to make the electrode of some metal, what exactly you'll be doing? You'll be taking rod of that particular metal and that rod of a particular metal that has to be introduced into a solution containing ions of the same metal. The whole setup you shall be calling as the electrode. Right? Now if I ask you, can you make can you make electrode of hydrogen? Can you make electrode of hydrogen say yes or no? See, I showed you how to make the electrode of zinc. I showed you how to make the electrode of copper. Can you make the electrode of hydrogen? Right? So that means you have to take the hydrogen rod. Now, how come it's possible to take the hydrogen rod? Hydrogen is a gas, right? Perfect. That's something which we have to discuss in detail. How to make the hydrogen electrode. But right here, I'll just give the idea of how do we make the hydrogen electrode. Just the quick glimpse of how do we make the hydrogen electrode. See guys, what exactly you shall be doing? You'll be taking a rod which is going to be either platinum or graphite. You'll be taking a rod which is going to be platinum or graphite. Let's say I have taken platinum. My dear students, there is property. I mean this platinum, it has got a property associated with it. And what is that property? If by chance, if by chance, you'll keep hydrogen gas molecules, if by chance you'll keep hydrogen gas molecules in the vicinity of this platinum rod, Let's assume that you are going to keep the hydrogen gas molecules in the vicinity of this, uh, this platinum rod over here. What exactly is going to happen? This, these hydrogen molecules, these are going to be adsorbed. These are going to get adsorbed on the surface of this rod. They'll get adsorbed on the surface of the rod. Right? Now, if these hydrogen gas molecules are adsorbed on the surface of the rod, what is going to happen? Can I say after some time, 
the whole surface of platinum, the whole surface of the platinum would have got covered by hydrogen gas. Yes, I would say the whole surface of platinum would have got covered by the hydrogen gas. Now, my dear students, if I ask you whether this rod from outside, is it looking like a platinum rod now? See, imagine this was the platinum rod. Now, H2 gas has been adsorbed on the surface of this platinum, right? This entire surface, the entire outer covering of this rod is covered by hydrogen gas. Now, from outside, is it looking like platinum? No, it looks like hydrogen rod to me, right? It looks like a hydrogen rod to me. Because I can see the entire surface covered by what? H2 gas. Now, what you'll be doing? You'll be introducing this H2 rod. You'll be introducing this H2 rod into a solution containing the ions of hydrogen. For example, contains H positives. So, I've introduced the rod into the solution which contains its own ions. So, again, I shall be calling this as the electrode. This is the hydrogen electrode, right? Just the quick idea, right? This is not something which is detailed. In the detailed way, I'll show you how to make the hydrogen electrode after some time. But right now, understand this. So I hope you got to know, I hope you got to know exactly how do we make the electrodes, yeah? Take the rod of the matter, introduce that into a solution containing the ions of the same matter, right? The entire, the complete setup is called as the electrode, okay? Now guys, let's get into the details of what? Let's get into the details of the Daniel cell now. Okay, now if I ask you what is the Daniel cell? Daniel cell, it is the common example of the galvanic cell. And what does a galvanic cell do? It converts chemical energy into electrical energy. So this Daniel cell is going to convert chemical energy into electrical energy. Now, how exactly? Let's see about, let's talk about that. See guys, in case of Daniel cell, you will be using two electrodes. In case of Daniel cell, you'll be using two electrodes. One is going to be your zinc electrode. And one is going to be your copper electrode. In case of your Daniel cell, you'll be using two electrodes. One is going to be your zinc electrode, one is going to be your copper electrode. Now, my dear students, if I compare zinc and copper, if I compare zinc and copper, let me tell you, zinc is comparatively, zinc is comparatively more electropositive. Zinc is comparatively more electropositive than that of what? Than that of copper. If I compare zinc with copper, let me tell you, zinc is comparatively more electropositive than copper. If zinc is more electropositive, what it's going to do? It's going to lose electrons. Electropositive metal, electropositive element, what it does? It has got the tendency to lose electrons. So I would say the cell which I'm going to make, in which the zinc is going to behave like the, I mean, in which the zinc and copper, these are the two electrodes, right? In that particular cell, this particular zinc electrode, since zinc is more electropositive, so it has got more tendency to lose electrons. So I would say, the zinc, it will undergo oxidation. And if zinc undergoes oxidation, I would say this copper will be undergoing reduction. This copper will be undergoing reduction. And already you know, oxidation, it takes place at anode, and reduction, it takes place at cathode. So my dear students, since you are going to make the Daniel cell, and in the Daniel cell, you are going to use two electrodes, zinc and copper. And you got to know easily which one is going to behave like the anode and which one is going to behave like the cathode, right? So do remember in the Daniel cell, your zinc electrode that will be behaving like the anode and copper electrode that is going to behave like the cathode, right? Okay, how exactly you got to know that? Zinc is considered to be more electropositive than copper. So more tendency to lose electrons. Loss of electrons is something which you call as oxidation and oxidation always takes place at anode. Right? This is how you can remember it. Okay? Now it's time to make the Daniel cell and see exactly how it works. Okay? It is time to make the Daniel cell and see exactly how it works. Try to understand everything in detail now because this is the most important point over here which I'm going to discuss. See guys, first of all, I'm going to take how many electrodes here? Two electrodes. One is zinc, one is copper. Let's try to make the zinc electrode first of all. For example, my dear students, this is the container which I have taken. And in this particular container, let's say I have taken zinc sulfate. The zinc sulfate, let's assume it has got completely dissociated into its ions and its ions are zinc di positive aqueous plus SO4 di negative. Okay, so in the container, I have taken zinc sulfate. The zinc sulfate has got completely dissociated into its ions. 
So I would say the container which I have taken in this particular container, you have got equal number of cations and anions, right? In this particular container, you have got equal number of cations and anions, right? If there are equal number of cations and anions present in this container, so I would say the solution is right now electrically neutral, right? Since there are equal number of cations and anions present. So this particular solution, it has to be electrically neutral and it is electrically neutral. Now people, what I'll be doing? I will be introducing a rod. Which rod I'm going to introduce? I'm going to introduce a zinc rod over here. I'm going to introduce a zinc rod over here. So try to understand. I have introduced zinc rod into a solution containing its own ions. I have introduced zinc rod into a solution containing its own ions. So this whole setup I'll be calling a zinc electrode. So this is your zinc electrode over here. Right? Similarly, I would need one more electrode as well. And you already know what that electrode is. That is going to be copper electrode. So again, I have taken one more container. And in this container, what exactly I have done? I have taken copper sulfate, for example. And I'm assuming this copper sulfate has got completely dissociated into its ions. And its ions are copper di positive and SO4 di negative. So I would say this particular solution right now, again, it contains equal number of cations and anions. So this solution again is electrically neutral. It is again electrically neutral. Now, I'm going to introduce a rod. I'm going to introduce a rod. Which rod? I've introduced copper rod into a solution containing its own ions. I've introduced copper rod into a solution containing its own ions. So this setup, again, I'll be calling as what? I'll be calling it as copper electrode, right? So how many electrodes have I taken? How many electrodes have I taken? Quickly. How many electrodes have I taken? I have taken two electrodes. One is zinc and one is copper. Correct? Now, dear students, I am going to connect these electrodes with the help of a voltmeter. I have connected them externally with the help of voltmeter, right? These two electrodes are connected with the help of voltmeter. And at the same time, internally, I'll be connecting them, internally, I'll be connecting them with the help of inverted U-type tube. This is inverted U-type tube over here. This is inverted U-type tube over here. My dear students, this inverted U-type tube, what does it contain? What does it contain? Let me tell you this inverted U type tube, which I have used over here, which I have used over here. This inverted U type tube, it contains an inert electrolyte. The example of the inert electrolyte is, for example, your KCl. For example, it's K2SO4. Let's say it is NH4Cl. These are the examples of the inert electrolytes. And my dear students, this inverted U type tube, I'm going to fill with inert electrolyte. And that inert, inert electrolyte, it is mixed with, that inert electrolyte, it is mixed with, it is mixed with gelatin or agar agar. This inert electrolyte, it is mixed with gelatin or agar agar. And let me tell you, when inert electrolyte is mixed with gelatin or agar agar, it forms a jelly-like paste. It forms a jelly-like paste. And let me tell you that jelly-like paste is basically introduced in this inverted U-type tube. So this inverted U-type tube, it contains a jelly-like paste, which contains inert electrolyte, which was mixed with gelatin or agar agar, right? And at the same time, the ends of the inert, I mean, the ends of this inverted U-type tube, the ends of this inverted U-type tube, it is sealed with cotton balls. So these are the cotton balls which I have used over here, right? Now people, if I ask you, if I ask you, imagine that you have used K2SO4 as the inert electrolyte. If I ask you which types of ions are present in this salt, in this inverted U-type tube, you will say it's going to be K positive and SO4 di negative. Let's say I've used K2SO4 as the inert electrolyte over here. So this inverted U-type tube, it's going to contain K positive and SO4 di negative. And this inverted U-type tube containing inert electrolyte, this is something which you call a salt bridge. This is something which you call as salt bridge. So the first thing which you, I would want every one of you to remember. What is a salt bridge? What does salt bridge contain? Salt bridge is basically the inverted U-type tube, which contains inert electrolyte, which is mixed with gelatin or agar agar. And when we mix inert electrolyte with gelatin or agar agar, it leads to the formation of the jelly-like paste. And that jelly-like paste is inserted in this inverted U-type tube. 
and the ends of this inverted U type tube are sealed with the help of the cotton balls, right? Yeah. What is the function of this salt bridge? You'll get to know in some time. Okay. Tell me one thing. Since I told you, I told you already, I told you already that this zinc electrode in the Daniel cell, it behaves like the, it is going to behave like the anode. And this copper electrode, it is going to behave like the, it is going to behave like the cathode. Right? This is something which I have mentioned already. I have told you already. Right? Right? And people tell me one thing. At anode, what's going to happen? At anode, oxidation is going to happen. And similarly, at cathode, what's going to happen? At cathode, I must say, at cathode, I must say, a reduction is going to happen. At cathode, reduction is going to take place. Right? Okay? Right, people? Someone is saying, spelling of jelly is incorrect. Yes, it's incorrect. It's J-E-L-L, -L right? Is that? Wow. So intelligent people. I'm teaching right now. Yeah? People, is everything clear till here? He is so intelligent, right? Literature people. And Padgava people. Just kidding. Okay. So I've used two electrodes. One is zinc, one is copper, right? The zinc electrode, it's going to behave like the anode and copper electrode, it's going to behave like the cathode. Yeah? And my dear students, at anode, we know oxidation takes place and at cathode, we know reduction takes place. Now, if I ask you whether this particular cell is complete right now or not, what do you think? What do you think? Is this complete? Is the circuit complete or not? Absolutely. The circuit is externally complete as well as it is internally complete. It's a closed loop. It is a closed loop, right? The circuit is complete right now. Okay. And if the circuit is complete, what is going to happen? I told you at anode oxidation is going to take place. So the first thing, what is going to happen at anode? I told you at anode oxidation is going to take place. Oxidation means loss of electrons, right? Now people, tell me one thing. Since you have taken a rod over here, which is a zinc rod, which is absolutely made up of zinc atoms. So this rod is made up of zinc atoms. Now the rod, since it is made up of zinc atoms, those zinc atoms of which rod is made, they'll undergo oxidation. Those zinc atoms of which rod is made, they'll undergo oxidation. Oxidation means loss of electrons. So I would say the zinc atom, for example, zinc solid, it is going to lose some electrons and it's going to get converted into zinc dipositive. I would say the zinc atom of which a rod is made, it will undergo oxidation, it will get converted into zinc dipositive and with that, you'll be getting two electrons. Now the zinc dipositive which we got by the oxidation of zinc atom of the rod, that zinc dipositive is going to enter into the solution. The solution initially was electrically neutral. Now I would say an extra zinc dipositive is going into the left container, due to which the left container carries the positive charge now. Agreed? What is happening? The zinc rod is made up of zinc atoms. And those zinc atoms of which rod is made, those zinc atoms are undergoing oxidation. And when zinc atom undergoes oxidation, it gets converted into zinc dipositive. And with that, it gives two electrons. Initially, the solution was electrically neutral. Now, in the solution, an extra zinc dipositive is entering, due to which this left container carries a positive charge. Now, these two electrons, they are going to get accumulated on the rod. They are going to get accumulated on the rod. Similarly, one more zinc solid, one more zinc atom will undergo oxidation. One more zinc dipositive is going to enter into the solution and two more electrons are going to accumulate on the rod. Similarly, I would say the electrons are continuously going to be accumulated on the rod. And if electrons are accumulated on the rod, tell me which charge this rod is going to carry. Since electrons are being accumulated on the rod, I would say the rod is going to carry the negative charge. That's something which I told you already, right? The rod of the zinc, the rod of the zinc electrode, it's going to carry which charge? Negative charge, right? Perfect. Yeah? Right, people? Now, at the same time, this copper electrode, it's going to behave like the cathode. And at cathode, what happens? At cathode, reduction takes place. Reduction means gain of electrons. 
So at cathode, I must say a reduction is going to take place. And you know reduction involves gain of electrons, right? Now try to understand. This particular solution, it contains two types of ions. Copper dipositive, SO4 dinegative. And it contains equal number of cations and anions. So this particular solution was electrically neutral in the beginning. Now what's going to happen? My dear students, if I ask you, between copper dipositive and SO4 dinegative, which one is electron deficient? Which one is electron deficient? Is it copper dipositive? Absolutely. So the copper dipositive which is in the solution, that is going to collide with this particular rod. The copper dipositive which is in the solution, it's going to collide with the rod. And this copper dipositive which is going to collide with the rod, it's going to take two electrons from the rod. So what's going to happen? The copper dipositive aqueous which was there in the solution, it is going to take two electrons from the rod. And when copper dipositive will take two electrons from the rod, it will get converted into copper solid. Right? Now try to understand. Since copper dipositive in the solution is taking electrons from the rod, right? From the rod, electrons are being snatched. So I must say the rod is going to carry the positive charge now. Because electrons are taking electrons are being taken away from what? From this copper dipositive over here. Correct? Now we will try to understand one thing. Try to understand one simple thing. At anode, oxidation happened. At cathode, reduction happened. Now, on this rod, electrons are accumulated. On this rod, there is a positive charge. Can I say this particular positive charge is going to attract these electrons towards itself? Since the path is already created, the path is already created. Now, this particular positive charge is going to attract these electrons, right? It's going to pull these electrons towards itself. Perfect. Now, tell me what is happening. Can I say electrons are basically moving from anode to cathode? This positive charge, charge rod, it's going to attracting, it's attracting the electrons towards itself. Due to which, due to which electrons are moving from anode to cathode, from zinc to copper, from zinc to copper. Now, if I ask you one thing, whether it is just the moment of electrons? No, it is not just the moment of electrons. It is moment of electrons in a particular direction. It is moment of charge in a particular direction. And when, whenever you see the directional moment of electrons, whenever you see the directional moment of charge, whenever you see electrons moving in a particular direction, they say current will be automatically generated here. Right? And you must be knowing the direction of current is always opposite to the direction of electrons. So the direction of current is going to be from cathode to anode. This is the first question which, which can be asked. In case of your galvanic cell, in case of your Daniel cell, what is the direction of the moment of electrons, anode to cathode? What is the direction of current? It's going to be from cathode to anode. Point number one. Point number two, my dear students. What is happening at anode? At anode, oxidation is happening. Due to which zinc solid, zinc atoms, zinc atoms of which rod was made up of, that's undergoing oxidation. Getting converted into zinc dipositive. That zinc dipositive is entering into the solution. Right? Similarly, Due to the oxidation of one more zinc atom from the rod, one more zinc atom will get oxidized, will get converted into zinc dipositive. That zinc dipositive will enter into the solution. Then one more zinc atom will get oxidized, will get converted into zinc dipositive, will enter into the solution. So what is happening to the thickness of this rod with time? Is the thickness of rod increasing or decreasing? Quickly. If the thickness of this particular rod increasing or decreasing, I would say the thickness of zinc rod, the thickness of zinc rod, it decreases with time. It decreases with time because the rod is made up of zinc atoms and those zinc atoms are continuously undergoing oxidation, continuously getting converted into zinc dipositives and those zinc dipositives are going into the solution, right? So this one more conclusion, the thickness of zinc rod decreases with time. Similarly, if you ask me, what is happening to the thickness of copper rod? What is happening to the thickness of copper rod? See, the CU dipositives which were there in the solution, they collided with the rod. They took two electrons from the rod, got converted into copper solid, and that copper solid will get deposited on the rod, my dear students. So, since copper solid is being deposited on the rod, due to which the thickness of the copper rod, that increases with time. The thickness of the copper rod, it increases with time, right? Since this particular cell, it is made up of two electrodes, anode, cathode, right? At anode, oxidation is taking place. At cathode, reduction is taking place. Now, if I ask you, what is going to be the net reaction? What is the net reaction? What is the net reaction which is happening in the cell? 
my dear students so whenever you are supposed to write the net reaction taking place in the cell first you shall be writing reaction taking place at anode then you shall be writing reaction taking place at cathode right reaction at anode reaction at cathode now what you should be doing you should be you should be i mean you are going to balance these electrons then write the reaction at anode first then write the reaction at cathode try to balance these electrons and in both the reactions electrons are balanced only now you can directly add up if the electrons were not balanced you were supposed to balance them imagine over here there was one electron then you were supposed to multiply this reaction by 2 to make the electrons balanced so first of all reaction at anode reaction at cathode try to balance the electrons after balancing the electro electrons try to what try to add these two reactions and when you add these two reactions i'll get something like this zinc solid plus copper di positive aqueous it gives zinc di positive aqueous and with this you will be writing copper solid as well so this is your net reaction which is happening in this daniel cell over here right it is the net reaction which is happening in the daniel cell now if i ask you how many electrons got cancelled you'll say two electrons got cancelled what is meant by that it means that it means that number of moles number of moles of electrons it means that number of moles of electrons exchanged exchanged in the net cell reaction exchanged in the net cell reaction which i'm representing with n that is equal to 2 so basically there is a moment of two moles of electrons from anode to cathode right since electrons are moving from anode to cathode so how many moles of electrons you got to know two moles of electrons are being exchanged from anode to cathode in this particular galvanic cell in this particular daniel cell right okay is this clear to everyone people is this clear to everyone right so simply just add the reaction when you add the reactions the number of electrons which gets cancelled that gives you the value of n basically okay now people you must be thinking what was the need of this salt bridge why did we introduce a salt bridge there is a logic for that as well there is a logic for that as well right salt bridge why do we use the salt bridge the first thing the first thing the first thing it it maintains it maintains electrical neutrality it maintains the electrical neutrality in both the solutions in both the solutions this is the first point now what that means exactly what is meant by it maintains electrical neutrality in both the solutions try to understand what exactly i'm going to say but you students this particular solution it was electrically neutral in the beginning this particular solution it was also electrically neutral in the beginning right then what happened when oxidation of zinc happened what happened the rod is made up of zinc atoms those zinc atoms they 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 have got they have undergone oxidation those zinc atoms got converted into zinc di positive right and those zinc di positives entered into the solution the solution was electrically neutral in the beginning now due to the presence of extra zinc di positive positive charge got accumulated over here right similarly my dear students initially there were equal number of cations and anions in the solution due to which this particular solution was electrically neutral now one of the cu di positive one of the cu di positive collided with the rod took two electrons from the rod got converted to cu solid and that cu solid got accumulated on the rod right but what happened to the concentration of cu di positives what happened to the number of cu di positives in the solution they decreased initially there were equal number of cations and anions now one of the cu di positives is undergoing reduction it is getting converted into cu solid that cu solid is deposited on the rod now what is happening to the number of cu di positives in the solution number of cu di positives are decreasing and if the number of cu di positives are increasing with time so what will happen to the charge on the solution will the solution get the negative charge absolutely the solution will get negative charge right initially equal number of cations and anions now one of the cation is lost it has undergone reduction so now one cation is less so more anions less cations so net negative charge on the solution right so i would say i would say the left container got the positive charge and right container got the negative charge now this salt bridge it already contains k positive and so for the negative i dear students as soon as this particular solution this particular solution gets the positive charge as soon as the solution gets the positive charge at the same time the so4 di negative is going to come from the salt bridge and it's going to neutralize this charge right similarly my dear students 
Once this particular solution gets the negative charge, at the same time, K positive is going to come from the solved bridge and it's going to neutralize this particular solution. So can I say the ions of the solved bridge, they are going to neutralize, they are going to maintain the neutrality in both the solutions? Yes, they are going to maintain the neutrality in both the solutions. Is this clear? That's what, that's what I exactly wrote over here. It maintains the ions of the solved bridge. They are going to maintain the electrical neutrality in both the solutions. Point number one. As soon as the left container gets the positive charge, at the same time SO4 dinegative is going to come from the solved bridge. Similarly, as soon as negative charge is accumulated in the right container, at the same time K positive is going to come. will make the solutions electrically neutral again. Right? Now, there is one more point. The solved bridge, it avoids, it avoids the liquid, it avoids the liquid junction potential. It avoids the liquid junction potential. Now, what is meant by liquid junction potential and how solved bridge exactly is going to avoid that? Let's try to identify. See guys, see exactly what I am going to do. Just a second. Just a second. Imagine I'm going to take only one container instead of two containers. Imagine that I'm only taking one container instead of two containers, right? I've just taken one container. And my dear students, this particular container which I've taken, I'm going to divide this container into two parts with the help of semi-permeable membrane. So this is the semi-permeable membrane which I've used in the middle, right? So how many chambers which we got? We got two chambers basically. Left chamber, right chamber. The left chamber I'm filling with zinc sulfate. The left chamber I'm filling with zinc sulfate. So imagine this is zinc sulfate present in the left chamber. Similarly in the right chamber, what do we have? My dear students, imagine that in the right chamber we have got copper sulfate. So basically in the left chamber you have got two types of ions. Zinc dipositives and SO4 dinegatives. Similarly, in the right chamber, you again have two types of ions, copper dipositives and SO4 dinegatives. I would say the left chamber contains equal number of cations and anions. The right chamber also contains equal number of cations and anions. So both the solutions right now, they are electrically neutral. Right? Now, now, introduce the zinc rod in the solution. Introduce a copper rod in this particular solution. Now, this is the zinc rod and this is the copper rod. So can I say this is the zinc electrode now and this is the copper electrode? So we have got two electrodes now, zinc electrode, copper electrode. Now dear students, what exactly you should be doing? You should be connecting them externally with the help of the voltmeter. Connect them externally with the help of voltmeter. If I ask you whether this cell is completed externally, right? Whether the circuit is complete externally, absolutely you have complete the circuit externally. And internally I would say, they are also connected because the solutions, they are in direct contact with the help of semi permeable membrane. So internally the cell is connected. Externally also the circuit is complete. Internally also the circuit is complete. So I would say the cell is complete right now. It's complete to work. I have not used salt bridge right now. I have not used salt bridge. By chance, if I do not use salt bridge, what's going to happen? Try to understand. See, this is your anode, right? This is your anode. And in the similar way, this is your cathode. At anode, what's going to happen? Oxidation is going to happen. The zinc rod is made up of zinc atoms. Those zinc atoms will undergo oxidation, will get converted into zinc dipositive. And that extra zinc dipositive is going to enter into the solution, due to which the solution carries what? Positive charge. Similarly, copper dipositive in the right chamber, it's going to collide with the rod. It's going to take electrons from the rod. And it will get converted into Cu solid. That Cu solid will get deposited on the rod. But what happened to the number of Cu dipositives in the solution? Since Cu dipositives, they are getting reduced. They are taking electrons from the rod, getting converted to Cu solid. That Cu solid is deposited on the rod. So I would say this right chamber will become Cu dipositive deficient. Already there were equal number of cations and anions. Now cations will be less. If cations are less, I'll say this particular solution, this particular chamber, it gets a negative charge. Now tell me one thing. Left chamber got positive charge. Right chamber got the negative charge. And I say this positive and negative is going to attract this is positive and this negative. They attracted, they got accumulated at the junction. Similarly, one more zinc atom will, get, will undergo oxidation. One more zinc positive will come into the solution. And similarly, one more negative charge here, positive negative will attract. 
again this process will keep on happening continuously the process will happen continuously positive negative right the process happened continuously if i talk about this particular junction on the left of this particular junction can you see positive charges on the right of this particular junction do you see the negative charges absolutely can i say at this junction potential difference got created can you see at this particular junction potential difference got created because on the left side you have got positive charge on the right side you have got negative charge a potential difference an extra potential difference is getting created at the junction and dear students this particular potential difference which gets created at the junction you call this potential difference as the liquid junction potential you call this potential difference as the liquid junction potential right and people if you do not use the solid bridge we'll get this extra potential difference here which is something you call as the liquid junction potential and by chance if you use the solid bridge what's going to happen if you use the solid bridge what's going to happen as soon as positive charge is accumulated in this container in the left chamber at the same time so4 di negative would have come from solid bridge neutralized it as soon as negative charge got developed in the right container at the same time k positive would have come from the solid bridge and neutralized it so there was no positive and negative if there was no positive and negative i would say there was no potential difference which which would have got created at junction right yeah so can i say this particular solid bridge it is avoiding the liquid junction potential absolutely it's avoiding the liquid junction potential right is it clear to everyone quickly in the chats quickly in the chats with the thumbs ups people everyone yeah wonderful now have a look on few more things since i told you the solid bridge it contains inert electrolyte now people have asked you what inert electrolyte does you saw its function so which type of salt we can use as the inert electrolyte condition for the salt to be used as the inert electrolyte condition for the salt to be used as an inert electrolyte number 1 number 1 the ions of the inert electrolyte the ions of inert electrolyte should have should have same ionic mobility this is point number 1 the speed with which k positive enters into the solution in the with the same speed so4 di negative enters into another solution so the cation and anion of the inert electrolyte they should move with the same same speeds they should have got same ionic mobility number 2 number 2 the ions of number 2 the ions of the ions of inert electrolyte should not should not participate the ions of the inert electrolyte should not participate in the net cell reaction it should not participate in the net cell reaction my dear students if you look at the net cell reaction look at the net cell reaction in this net cell reaction do you see k positive or so4 di negative there is no k positive or so4 di negative here so the inert electrolyte which you use in the salt bridge let me tell you it should not participate in the net cell reaction right so you will be using that type of inert electrolyte whose cation and anion speed whose cation and anion mobility will be the same number 1 number 2 number 2 what should be there the ions of the inert electrolyte they should not participate in the net cell reaction i hope this is super super clear to everyone let me know once in the chats if all these things are clear let me know quickly in the chats if all these things are clear these are the conclusions any conclusion can be asked in your examination any conclusion can you can be asked in the examination people right zinc electrode anode oxidation loss of electrons copper electrode cathode reduction gain of electrons reduction of electrons from anode to cathode reduction of current cathode to anode zinc electrode keeps on dissolving its thickness reduces thickness of copper electrode increase with time similarly if i talk about salt bridge completes the internal circuit it avoids the liquid junction potential maintains the electrical neutrality in the salt bridge we use inert electrolyte like nh4no3 kno3 this this mixed with gelatin to get the jelly like paste etc etc all these things are clear all these things are clear let me know once in the chats rupa which example you are asking what example this is the most typical example of the galvanic cell you will see millions of galvanic cells in some time just wait for it don't spam the chats once you write something in the chats just once don't spam 
People, let me know in the chats if all the things are clear till here. Quickly, 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 everyone. Quickly, quickly. <clears throat> all the things are clear. Perfect, guys. Now it is that it's time to see exactly how do we represent the galvanic cells, right? How do we represent galvanic cells? Let's get to know about that. See, guys. First of all, let's try to see how do we represent the Daniel cell. Daniel cell, it is the one of the common example. It is one of the common example of the uh, galvanic cell. Let's see exactly how this Daniel cell is represented. So when you try to represent a galvanic cell, in the middle, you'll be using two lines. And these two lines, they are going to represent a salt bridge. These two lines are going to represent the salt bridge. Okay. On the left side of the salt bridge, you'll be using anode. On the right side of the salt bridge, you'll be using cathode. And you already know at anode what happens? At anode oxidation takes place. And you already know at cathode what happens? At cathode reduction takes place. This is something which you already know. Perfect. The general representation of the galvanic cell. Use the two lines in the middle, salt bridge. On the left side, you'll be writing the anode. On the right side, you'll be writing the cathode. Now, let's exactly see how these galvanic cells are actually represented. Try to understand what exactly I'm going to do. Try to understand what exactly I'm going to do. My dear students, in case of galvanic cells, what do we need exactly? We need two electrodes. In case of galvanic cell, we need two electrodes. Take two electrodes, connect them externally, connect them internally. Connect them externally, connect them internally. Right? You'll be getting a complete cell. Perfect. The most common example was Daniel's cell, in which the two electrodes were zinc and copper. Right? In case of other galvanic cells, you can take any electrode. Hydrogen electrode, cadmium electrode. Any two electrodes connect externally as well as internally. You'll be getting a galvanic cell. Now, how do you represent the galvanic cell with the help of their net cell reaction? Imagine that there is a galvanic cell in which you have used two electrodes, right? This is the net cell reaction taking place in the galvanic cell. With the help of this particular net cell reaction, you should know how to represent the galvanic cell. Try to understand. Try to understand. See guys, first of all, since this is the net cell reaction, if I ask you what is the charge on zinc? Zero. What is the charge on copper? Plus two. What is the charge on this zinc? Plus two. What is the charge on this copper? It is zero, right? Okay. Perfect. Now people, try to understand. Is the oxidation state of zinc increasing or decreasing? It's increasing from 0 to plus 2. Copper dye positive. Plus 2 to 0, decrease in the oxidation state. Increase in the oxidation state is something which you call as oxidation. So I would say zinc is undergoing oxidation. Copper dye positive is undergoing reduction. Now remember, oxidation takes place at anode. Reduction takes place at you know, it takes place at cathode. Since you identify which one is going to behave like the anode, which one is going to behave like the cathode, right? Now, people, how do you represent it? The two lines, they are going to represent the salt bridge, which we discussed a few minutes back, and someone is still spamming, what is salt bridge, what is salt bridge? Nonsense, girl, she is. It's been half an hour, I've been teaching you what is salt bridge, and you are coming and entering into the session and spamming the chat with what is salt bridge, what is salt bridge? Are you out of your mind? You can get the hell out of my class, please. It's been one hour and we have been teaching what is salt bridge. I've given you functions of the salt bridge. Suddenly you're entering into the class. You were somewhere else till now. Suddenly you're coming into the class and spamming the chats that too. I've got the option of blocking as well, by the way. Try to understand now. These two lines, what do they represent? They represent the salt bridge. And on the left of the salt bridge, what do we write? We write anode. At anode, what happens? Oxidation. Oxidation of what is happening? Oxidation of what is happening? Oxidation of zinc is happening and this zinc is getting converted into zinc dye positive. So on the left side, what is happening? Zinc solid, it is getting converted into zinc dye positive. 
and this zinc dipositive it goes into the left container left chamber if you remember imagine that imagine that the concentration of zinc dipositive in the left chamber imagine that that is c1 molar imagine that that is c1 molar similarly on the right side what do we write on the right side we write the cathode and at cathode you know reduction takes place reduction of what is taking place copper dipositive and copper dipositive is getting converted into copper salt so at cathode you got to know that copper dipositive which was there in the right solution right chamber that collided with the rod took two electrons from the rod and got converted into cu solid i hope you remember that so this copper dipositive which was there in the right chamber let's assume that its concentration is c2 molar right and it got converted into copper solid so this is how you represent your galvanic cell whose net cell reaction was given to us i hope this is clear right i hope this is clear i hope this is clear similarly let me take one more example with that every single thing will be clear to you imagine my dear students you have got a galvanic cell imagine you have got a galvanic cell in which the net cell reaction is this one imagine you have got a galvanic cell in which net cell reaction is this one from the net cell reaction can we write the galvanic cell can we represent the galvanic cell absolutely we can do that what is the charge on this iron it's zero charge on this copper it's plus 2 charge on this particular iron it's plus 2 charge on this copper it's zero identify first of all which one is your anode and which one is your cathode identify iron is changing its oxidation state from 0 to plus 2 0 to plus 2 means increase in the oxidation state increase in the oxidation state means oxidation so this particular iron is undergoing oxidation and oxidation takes place at anode right similarly the oxidation state of copper is changing from plus 2 to 0 plus 2 to 0 means decrease in the oxidation state decrease in the oxidation state is something which we call as reduction reduction always takes place at cathode so first of all you identify which one is your anode and which one is your cathode now what i'll be doing i'll be using two lines these two lines represent the solid bridge on the left side of the solid bridge i'll be writing anode I'll be writing anode and at anode oxidation takes place and oxidation of what is taking place oxidation of iron is taking place iron is getting converted into fe type fe di positive right perfect so what is happening at anode fe solid is getting converted into fe di positive and i must say this fe di positive will go into the left container in which the concentration of fe di positive imagine that assume that that is c1 molar on the right side you will have to write cathode at cathode reduction takes place reduction of what cu di positive cu di positive will get converted cu di positive which was there in the right container whose concentration imagine was c2 molar it got converted into cu solid right so this is how you represented this particular cell over here yeah is this clear quickly is this clear quickly sure you can check the name of the channel it is an academy neat english okay perfect let's take one more example imagine that you have got a galvanic cell imagine that you have got a galvanic cell in which this is the net cell reaction by looking at the net cell reaction you should be able to write you should be able to represent the cell again what i'll be doing so first of all the charge on zinc is zero the charge on zinc here is plus two zero to plus two means increase in the oxidation state increase in the oxidation state is oxidation and oxidation takes place at anode if this is anode that means this has to be your cathode right at cathode reduction takes place so you identified the anode and cathode perfect now people use the two lines as a solid bridge on the left side you'll be writing the anode at 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 anode zinc is getting converted into zinc dipositive so zinc solid at anode is getting converted into zinc dipositive and this zinc dipositive enters into the left chamber in which the concentration of zinc dipositive is for example c1 molar right similarly on the right side of the right side at the right side what's going to happen at the right side you'll be writing the cathode and at cathode reduction takes place the reduction of what h positive and h positive is getting converted into h2 so basically h positive whose concentration in the right chamber is for example c2 molar it is getting converted into h2 gas few minutes back only i told you how do you make the hydrogen electrode with the help of platinum solid with the help of platinum solid you make the hydrogen electrode 
so i'll be writing platinum solid as well here right i hope this is clear i hope this is clear to everyone okay let me take one more example and with that we'll be moving on to the new concept see guys let's assume you have got a galvanic cell in which this is the net cell reaction in which this is the net cell reaction by looking at the net cell reaction try to identify it try to represent the galvanic cell how the charge on hydrogen is zero the charge on copper is plus two the charge on hydrogen is plus one the charge on copper is zero check it out now zero to plus one increase in the oxidation state increase in the oxidation state means oxidation oxidation takes place at anode so you got to know what your anode is copper plus two to zero plus two to zero decrease in the oxidation state decrease in the oxidation state is something which you call as reduction and you know reduction takes place at cathode so you identified your anode and cathode so what you'll be doing again draw the two lines these two lines represent the solid bridge on the left you'll be writing the anode and at anode h2 is getting converted into h positive at anode h2 gas is getting converted into h positive and this h positive it enters into the left container in which the concentration of h positive imagine that is c1 molar now this is the hydrogen electrode hydrogen electrode is made with the help of what it is made with the help of platinum solid so i have written platinum solid with it as well right i have mentioned platinum solid here as well now on the right side what do you have to write you will have to write cathode and at cathode reduction takes place a reduction of what copper di positive and this copper di positive this copper di positive it's undergoing reduction this copper di positive is present in the right chamber right in which the concentration of cu di positive imagine that it is c2 molar and my dear students this copper di positive it is getting converted into copper solid so this is how you represent the cell this is how you represent the cell okay this is how you represent the cell perfect this is how you represent the cell can you represent this one uh i think i've already showed this leave this aside now okay the other one can you represent this particular cell can you represent this particular cell try to identify what exactly should be done the oxidation state of chromium right here is plus 6 right here it's plus 2 oxidation state of chromium here is plus 3 and here it's plus 3 as well perfect you got the oxidation states now tell me one thing is the oxidation state of chromium increasing or decreasing plus 6 to plus 3 decrease decrease in the oxidation state is something which you call as reduction and reduction takes place at cathode so this is your cathode if this is cathode that means this has to be your anode so you identified your cathode and anode so draw the two lines these two lines will be representing solid bridge on the left side write the anode and at anode you can see fe di positive is getting converted into fe tri positive so i'll be writing like this fe di positive is basically getting converted into what fe tri positive similarly on the right side you will be writing cathode and at cathode cr2o7 di negative is getting converted into cr tri positive so cr2o7 di negative is getting converted into cr tri positive so this is your cathode now first of all try to understand try to understand one simple thing uh just a second guys just just a second people okay so try to understand one more thing this is ion this is ion right this is basically ion ion electrode till now if you remember your zinc electrode we used to have a zinc rod zinc rod was dipped into zinc di positive here there is no rod i mean what kind of rod here is i was taking zinc rod which was made up of zinc atoms right and those zinc atoms were dipped in zinc di positive ions similarly copper electrode take the copper rod introduce that in copper di positive yeah and here you have got ion ion okay here you have got ion ion electrode so again in order to make this electrode you will take the help of platinum solid again over here you have got ion 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 as well as ion so this particular electrode is also made with the help of platinum solid perfect i hope this is clear i hope this is clear so this is how you represent it for example there is one more cell reaction of some galvanic cell which is given to me how do i represent it how do i represent it again the simple procedure will be following calculate the oxidation state of manganese here it's plus 7 calculate the oxidation state of carbon over here it's plus 3 oxidation state of manganese here it's plus 2 oxidation state of carbon over here it's plus 4 agree now tell me one thing what is happening to the oxidation state of manganese plus 7 to plus 2 decrease in the oxidation state 
Decrease in the oxidation state is something which you call as reduction. Reduction takes place at cathode. So this is going to be your cathode, right? Plus 3 to plus 4. Plus 3 to plus 4. Increase in the oxidation state. Means oxidation. Oxidation takes place at anode. So you identified your anode and cathode. You identified your anode and cathode. Now, use the two lines as a salt bridge. On the left side, try to write anode. And at anode, the oxalate ion, it is getting converted into carbon dioxide. The oxalate ion, C2O4 di negative, it is getting converted into carbon dioxide. Similarly, on the right, you'll be writing the cathode. And at cathode, reduction takes place. MnO4 negative gets converted into Mn di positive. So I would say MnO4 negative is getting converted into Mn di positive here. Right? Again, have a look. This is gas. This is ion. So this is a new type of electrode. So what kind of electrodes we have discussed till now? We have discussed metal, metal ion electrode. Metal, for example, zinc rod introduced in zinc dipositive. So metal, metal ion electrode. Copper rod introduced in Cu dipositive. So metal, metal ion electrode. This is not metal, metal ion electrode. This is not your metal, metal ion electrode. Right? This is ion, this is ion. So whenever you do not have the metal, metal ion electrode, you'll be using platinum with it. Right? So in order to make this particular electrode, you'll take the help of platinum. Here also you'll take the help of platinum. So this is how you're going to represent this particular cell as well. Yeah? Perfect. I hope this type of, these type of things are clear to you. Now we will try to understand few more things. Try to understand few more things. Till now I was teaching you how to represent a cell. Right? How was represent a cell. Now comes the most important part. If the cell is given to you, if the cell is given to you, after looking at the cell, how do you write the cell reaction? After looking at the cell, how do you write the cell reactions? That is important. Right? So mark the heading as how to write the cell reactions. This is most important part over here. Because afterwards, I'm going to teach you the Nernus equation. Nernus equation, you can only do if you understand this particular topic. Right? How to write. How to write the net cell reaction. How to write the net cell reaction. Okay, tell me one thing guys. Do you remember how to write the equilibrium constant? Do you, do you remember how do we write the equilibrium constant of some reaction? Do you remember that? Quickly. Do you remember that? Yeah, yes or no? I hope you do, right? Okay. Now, for example, let's say you have got a cell like this. Zinc solid getting converted into zinc dipositive. Salt bridge. Copper dipositive getting converted into copper solid. Imagine this is the cell which is given to us. After looking at the cell, what all parameters we should conclude from the cell? What all parameters we should get from the cell? See guys. See. Point number one. Point number one. This is the salt bridge. On the left side of the salt bridge, you know, it's going to be anode always. On the right side of the salt bridge, it's going to be cathode always. Right? And at anode, what happens? At anode, what happens? At anode, oxidation takes place. Your zinc is getting converted into zinc dipositive. Zinc is getting converted into zinc dipositive. See. 0 to plus 2. 0 to plus 2, increase in the oxidation state, means oxidation, means loss of electrons. So basically at anode oxidation takes place and oxidation means loss of electrons. So I would say zinc has to go into zinc dipositive. So the reaction has to be zinc solid. It will be getting converted into zinc dipositive aqueous. And with this, you will be writing two electrons. Because the reaction is taking place at anode. And at anode oxidation takes place. Oxidation means loss of electrons. So zinc is getting converted into zinc dipositive. 0 to plus 2. Increase in the oxidation state. Means oxidation. Means loss of electrons. So when zinc will be getting converted into zinc dipositive, it will be giving two electrons. Right? Perfect. Similarly, what is happening at cathode? What is happening at cathode? You know, at cathode, reduction takes place. At cathode, reduction takes place. Look at the cathode. Plus 2 to 0. Plus 2 to 0 means decrease in the oxidation state. Plus 2 to 0 means decrease in the oxidation state. Decrease in the oxidation state means reduction. Reduction means gain of electrons. So I would say copper dipositive will be gaining some electrons and then only it will be getting converted into copper solid. So if I ask you how many electrons this copper dipositive will be gaining, it's simple. I would say copper dipositive will be gaining two electrons and it will be getting converted into copper solid. 
This is the reaction taking place at cathode. Now you got the reaction at anode. You got the reaction at cathode. What is the next step? You will have to write the net reaction. My dear students, before writing the net reaction, before writing the net reaction, what you need to do? You need to balance the electrons. Are the electrons already balanced? Yes, the electrons are balanced. Now we can directly add them. And when you add them, what exactly you'll be writing? You should be writing zinc solid plus copper dipositive aqueous. What does it give us? It gives us zinc dipositive aqueous. And with zinc dipositive aqueous, you'll be writing copper solid as well. So this is the net cell reaction, which is taking place in the galvanic cell, which is given to us, right? This is a net cell reaction. If I ask you, since you got to know the net cell reaction, if I ask you, how many moles of electrons got exchanged in the net cell reaction? You will directly say two moles of electrons got exchanged in the net cell reaction. If I ask you, how do you write the reaction quotient? QC, reaction quotient. My dear students, if you remember, reaction quotient expression is written in the similar way as you write the equilibrium constant expression, right? You'll be starting with the product. You'll be starting with the products, right? In order to write the QC, you'll be starting with the product. And that reactant or product which will be present in aqueous state, you'll be using the term concentration for that. That reactant or product which will be present in gaseous state, you'll be using partial pressure, pressure term for that. That reactant or product which is in solid state or liquid state, right? You're not going to consider that. It's active mass is taken as unity. Leave that part aside. Tell me one thing. In order to write the expression for QC, you'll be starting with the product. This particular product is in aqueous state. So you'll write concentration of zinc dye positive. Raised to the power, it's stoichiometric coefficient, that's one, right? This one is in solid state. It's X2 mass is unity, nothing to do with it, divided by. This is also in solid state. It's X2 mass is unity, nothing to do with it. This copper dye positive, it's in aqueous state. So you'll be using the term concentration. So concentration of Cu dye positive raised to the power one. So this is how you write the expression of QC for this particular cell that's given to us. These are three important points which you have to learn at any cost. Then only you can master the electrochemistry. First, write the net cell reaction, get the value of N and write the QC expression. Let me take few more examples. Wait. Let me take few more examples. Let me take few more examples. For example, the second example which I'm taking, it is like this. Understand guys. Let's say you've got the cell like this. Ag solid. Ag positive. Solid bridge. H positive, H2 gas, and here this is platinum solid. Let's assume this is a cell that's given to me, right? So after looking at this cell, I should know all the parameters. First thing, what is the first thing? On the left side of the salt bridge, what do I write? I'll be writing the anode. On the right side, I'll be writing the cathode. Correct? One is anode, one is cathode. Perfect. Now people, at anode, what happens? Oxidation takes place. So, the reaction taking place at anode will be the oxidation reaction. Oxidation means loss of electrons. See, this is 0, this is plus 1. 0 to plus 1, increase in the oxidation state, means oxidation, right? So, Ag has to get converted into Ag positive, then only I can say that oxidation is taking place. So, Ag solid, it has to get converted into Ag positive, right? Then only I'll say oxidation will take place. Now, when it's oxidation, loss of electrons takes place, loss of electrons. Now, how many electrons are lost? I would say when Ag is getting converted into Ag positive, this Ag will be losing some electrons. How many? How do you check that? Final oxidation state minus initial oxygen state. Final minus initial will give you one. So, it is losing one electron here basically, in short. Right? Similarly, add cathode. Add cathode, what is happening? Add cathode, I must say, a reduction is taking place. Your H positive is getting converted into H2. So, plus one to zero. Plus 1 to 0 means decrease in the oxidation state. Plus 1 to 0 means decrease in the oxidation state. Decrease in the oxidation state means reduction. A reduction means gain of electrons. So H positive has to get converted into H2. Then only a reduction will take place. So what has to be the reaction? What has to be the reaction? So what should we form? We have to form H2 gas. So to form H2 gas, how many H positives do we need? We need two H positives. We need two H positives. So H positive should be gaining electrons, then only it will be getting converted into H2. Correct? How many electrons? Check it out. How many electrons? How many electrons H positive should? How many electrons will be participating in this reaction? Can you let me know that? How many electrons will be participating in this reaction? See, for example, if you have one H positive, 
one H positive will gain one electron will get converted into H. But do I have to make H or H2? I have to make H2. To make H2, you should take two H positives. Two H positives will gain two electrons, right? Perfect. So plus two electrons. Now tell me one thing. In order to write the net cell reaction, do I have to add the reactions directly? No, I'm not supposed to add the reactions directly. So what do I need to do? I'll be balancing the electrons first. In the first reaction, you've got one electron. In the second reaction, you've got two electrons. So I'm, I'll be multiplying this reaction by two. When you multiply this particular reaction by two, this becomes two times, this becomes two times, even this becomes two times. Now add them up. It is going to be two times Ag solid plus two times H positive aqueous. It gives what? It gives two times Ag positive aqueous plus H2 gas. This is your net cell reaction. This is your net cell reaction. And my dear students, in this particular net cell reaction, if I ask you how many moles of electrons got exchanged, you'll say two moles of electrons got exchanged in the net cell reaction. If I ask you, how do we write the QC expression? QC is going to be, start with the product. This product is an aqueous state. So use the term concentration. Concentration of Ag positive, raised parts to isometric equation, that's two. This H2 is in gaseous state. Use the term partial pressure. Partial pressure of H2 raised parts to isometric equation, that's one. Divided by this is in solid state, so its active mass is unity, nothing to do with this. H positive, use its concentration, raise power what? Raise power 2. So this is how you write QC expression as well. I hope this is super clear to everyone, right? Okay? Clear? Clear people? Perfect. For example, this is the cell that's given to me. Try to write all the parameters. Try to write all the parameters related to this particular cell. Whatever I have taught you till now. Utilize all the concepts and write out. See guys, these two lines, they are representing the solid bridge. On the left side, you always write anode. On the right side, you always write cathode. Right? And you know, at anode oxidation takes place, loss of electrons. Right? You can check it out also. H2 is 0, here it's plus 1. 0 to plus 1 is increase in the oxidation state. It means oxidation, loss of electrons, right? Now, tell me the reaction taking place at anode. I would say at anode, H2 has to get converted into H positive. At anode, I must say, H2 gas, it has to get converted into H positive. But should I write H positive or 2 times H positive? Absolutely, I should write 2 times H positive, right? Because this H2. Perfect. Now, you know, when H2 is getting converted into H positive, 0 to plus 1, increase means oxidation, loss of electrons. So, H2 has to lose some electrons, then only it will get converted into H positive. Now, how many electrons will it lose? Check it out. Final minus initial. Final minus initial. The value is 1. But 1 is the change in the oxidation state for 1 atom of hydrogen. But I have 2. Right? So how many electrons it will be losing? It will be losing 2 electrons. It's simple. It's simple guys. See, when 1 hydrogen, 1 hydrogen has got 1 electron. Right? When it loses 1 electron, it gets converted into H positive. Right? But do I have 1 hydrogen? No. We have got 2 hydrogens. So 2 hydrogens will be giving 2 H positives. And with that, you'll be getting 2 electrons as well. Perfect. So you got the reaction at anode. Now it's time to write the reaction at cathode. Time to write the reaction at cathode. At cathode, what happens? Reduction. Plus 4 to plus 2. Plus 4 to plus 2. Decrease. Decrease means reduction. Gain of electrons. Right? So I would say SN plus 4 aqueous. SN plus 4 aqueous. At cathode should get converted into what? It has to get converted into SN plus 2 aqueous. Now, at cathode, reduction takes place. Gain of electrons. So I must say SN plus 4 has to gain electrons, then only it will get converted into SN plus 2. Right? Now how many electrons this SN plus 4 will be gaining? Final oxidation state minus initial. I would say 2 electrons it will be gaining. Tell me one thing. Whether electrons are balanced in both the reactions or not? Yes, the electrons are balanced. Electrons are balanced in both the reactions, right? Yeah? Electrons are balanced in both the reactions. So directly you are going to add them up. When you add them up, what do we get? We get H2 gas plus SN plus 4 aqueous. It gives 2 times H positive aqueous plus SN di positive aqueous. Perfect. Now people, if I ask you how many moles of electrons got exchanged, you will directly say 2 moles of electrons got exchanged, right? 2 moles of electrons got exchanged. So I would say n value is equal to 2. 2 moles of electrons got exchanged in the net cell reaction. Now if you ask me what is the QC value, start with the product. Start with the product. This H positive is an aqueous state. So use the term concentration. 
concentration of H positive raised positive stoichiometric equation that's two. S and di positive is again acoustate. So concentration of S and di positive raised positive stoichiometric equation divided by H two is in gaseous state. So use the term pressure. Pressure of H two raised positive stoichiometric equation. S n plus four is then again aqueous state. So use the term concentration raised positive stoichiometric equation. This is how you write the expression for Q C. Is this clear? Is this clear, people? Is this clear? Quickly. For example, this is the question. You have to write the net cell reaction. You have to write the QC. You have to get the end value. Guys, these are the most important things which I'm teaching you right now. Because if all these things are not clear, definitely electrochemistry can never be clear. Honestly, I'm telling you. Okay? Try to understand. Try to understand. Okay. See, guys, these two lines, they'll be representing what? Salt bridge. On the left side, We'll be writing anode. On the right side, we'll be writing cathode. So you have got anode and cathode, right? Now, dear students, at anode, what happens? Oxidation takes place. At anode, oxidation takes place. Oxidation means loss of electrons. See, oxidation state here is zero. It's plus four. Zero to plus four means increase. Increase means oxidation. Oxidation means loss of electrons. So I would say, tin has to get converted into SN plus four. I would say SN solid should get converted into SN plus 4, right? Then only oxidation will happen. Now it's evident when, when SN gets converted into SN plus 4, increase in the oxidation state means oxidation means loss of electrons. So SN has to lose certain electrons. Then only it will get converted into SN plus 4. Now how many electrons? Final minus initial, the value is 4. So I would say it will be losing 4 electrons. Yeah? Similarly, what is going to happen at cathode? I would say at cathode, reduction takes place. Reduction takes place. Reduction means gain of electrons. See the oxidation state here is 0. Here it's minus 1. 0 to minus 1 means decrease in the oxidation state. Decrease in the reduction. So at cathode, Cl2 has to get converted into Cl negative. At cathode, Cl2 has to get converted into Cl negative. So I must say Cl2 gas, it has to get converted into Cl negative. Right? And you know at cathode, reduction takes place. Gain of electrons. So I would say Cl2 will be gaining some electrons. Then only it will be getting converted into Cl negative. Now this is Cl2. Make it two times Cl negative. Tell me one thing. Zero to minus one. What is the change? One. One is the change for one atom. How many we have? Two. So basically it will be gaining two electrons. Are the electrons balanced in both? No. You will be balancing the electrons. So multiply this particular reaction by number two. This becomes two times. This becomes four times. This becomes four times. Now add these two reactions. I would say four and four got cancelled. So the net reaction is going to be 10 solid, 10 solid plus 2 times Cl2 gas, plus 2 times Cl2 gas, just a second, yeah, 2 times Cl2 gas, it gives what? It gives SN plus 4 aqueous and with that you'll be writing 4 times Cl negative aqueous as well. So this is your net cell reaction. If you ask me how many moles of electrons got exchanged, how many moles of electrons got exchanged, I'll directly say 4 moles of electrons got exchanged. What is the value of QC? What is the value of QC? Start with the product. This is an aqueous state. So it has to be concentration of SN plus 4 raised power 1. Right? It has to be concentration of Cl negative raised power 4 divided by. This is in solid state. It's active mass is unity. The Cl2 is in gaseous state. So use the term pressure. So pressure of Cl2 raised power 2. So this is how you are going to write QC for the net reaction as well. Right? Is this clear to everyone? Is this clear to everyone quickly? Okay. One example in which you might do a mistake. One example in which you might do a mistake. For example, I'm writing like this. I'm representing a cell like this. Platinum solid. This is Fe di positive. Getting converted into Fe tri positive. This is salt bridge for example. And this is MnO4 negative getting converted into Mn di positive. This is one more platinum solid. Let's assume this is the cell which is given to me. Imagine that it is the cell which is given to me. Now you have to do every single procedure. Anode reaction, cathode reaction, net reaction, N value and QC. Here you can do a mistake. Try to understand what that mistake is. First of all, I'll be writing the reaction which should take place at anode. At anode oxidation takes place. Your Fe di positive is getting converted into Fe tri positive, right? 
plus 2 to plus 3. Increase in the oxidation state, loss of electrons. So basically, if a dipositive aqueous will be losing certain electrons and then only getting converted into Fe tripositive aqueous. Now, how many electrons? Final minus initial. I'll say one electron. This is the reaction at anode, right? Now, if I ask you what is going to be the reaction at cathode, you know, at cathode, reduction takes place. At cathode, reduction takes place, gain of electrons. Now, my dear students, the oxidation state of manganese here is plus 7. Plus 7 to plus 2, decrease in the oxidation state. Plus 7 to plus 2, decrease. Decrease means reduction. So basically, at cathode, MnO4 negative will be finally getting converted into Mn di positive. Right? Since it's a reduction reaction, plus 7 to plus 2 means decrease. Decrease means reduction, gain of electrons. How many electrons will be gained? MnO4 negative will be gaining certain electrons. How many? Final oxidation state minus initial. So it will be gaining 5 electrons. Then only it will be getting converted to Mn di positive. Correct? Now people, are the electrons balanced? The electrons are not balanced in the reaction. So I'll be balancing the electrons. Multiply this reaction by number 5. So this has to be 5 times. Even this has to be 5 times. Even this automatically becomes 5 times. Right? Now you are going to add these two reactions. Just add them up. Just add them up. This is going to be 5 times F A di positive aqueous plus what? Plus MnO4 negative aqueous. And it's going to give me 5 times F A tri positive aqueous plus Mn di positive aqueous. This is your net reaction. Perfect. This is your net reaction. Now tell me one thing. How many electrons are being exchanged in the net cell reaction? I would say. 5 moles of electrons are exchanged in the net cell reaction, right? Now one thing is there, is the reaction balanced or not? This is not the net cell reaction yet. The reaction is not completely balanced. You are supposed to balance the reaction completely. You have to write the reaction in the complete balanced format. It is not present in the complete balanced format, right? So what you shall be doing? Understand? Understand people. How many oxygen atoms do you have on the left side? 4 oxygen atoms, right? How many oxygen atoms are on the right side? No oxygen atoms. So which side is oxygen deficient? LHS or RHS? RHS is oxygen deficient. How many oxygen deficiency are there on the right side? Four oxygen deficiency. Number of oxygen deficiency is equal to number of water molecules added on the oxygen deficient side. So on this side, I'll be adding four water molecules. I'll be adding four water molecules. Now tell me one thing. How many hydrogens on this side? Eight. How many hydrogens on this side? No. So which side is hydrogen deficient? LHS side. Hydrogen deficiency is eradicated through H positives. So on this side, we have got eight hydrogen deficiency. The number of hydrogen deficiency is equal to the number of H positives added on that side, which is hydrogen deficient. So basically, oxygen is balanced with the help of water and hydrogen is balanced with the help of H positives. Something which I've taught you in redox reactions as well. Right? Yes? Perfect people. A Prasant work everywhere has got the sign minus. We always start with minus sign. Minus integral V1 to V2. P gas multiplied by dV. That's for reversible. And for irreversible it is minus P external delta V. V2 minus V1. This negative is in chemistry basically. In physics you do not start with negative sign. In physics your work expression is Simple, P delta V. Here it is minus P delta V. And minus here indicates that internal energy decreases during expansion. Internal energy of the system I'm talking about. Right? Okay. So this is the net reaction now. N value is calculated. Now it is the time to get QC expression. In order to get the QC, we have to start with the products. We have to start with the products, right? See, this is aqueous. So use the term concentration. Concentration of Fe tri positive. Raise bar 5. This is aqueous. It is concentration of Mn di positive. Raise bar stoichiometric coefficient, that's 1. This water is in liquid state, nothing to do with this. Divided by. This H positive is in aqueous state, so concentration of H positive, raise bar 8. Fe di positive is in aqueous state, so concentration of Fe di positive, raise bar 5. MnO4 aqueous state, so it is concentration of MnO4 negative, raise bar 1. So this is how you write the expression for QC as well. Perfect. In these questions, see guys, you know why? These are not the actual questions. The actual question will come in the Nernest equation. But Nernest equation, while solving the question based on Nernest equation, you should know all these parameters basically. 
That's why I'm clearing all the parameters right here. That's why I'm clearing all the parameters right here. So that when I teach you Nernest equation, there'll be no issues at all in doing the equations. Yeah? Clear, people? Clear, clear, clear. Okay. Let me give one last example. Look at this particular example, guys. Look at this particular example. This is the last example of the today's session. Okay. After this, we'll end the session. The next session will be, the next session will be, or should I give you as this as the homework? What do you think? What do you suggest? Are you going to solve this? Or let me solve this. The other one I'll be giving you the homework. Okay. And let me tell you the next session will be on Tuesday 6 p.m. Lecture number 2 of Electrochemistry. Let me solve this. The other question I'll be giving is the homework. Okay, let's try to solve this. First of all, these two lines, they represent the solid bridge. On the left side, you'll be writing the anode. Right, so this is the anodic part. This is the cathodic part. You know, at anode oxidation takes place. At anode oxidation takes place. So Fe di positive is getting converted into Fe tri positive. Right? So Fe di positive aqueous is getting converted into Fe tri positive aqueous. Since it is the oxidation reaction, so loss of electrons has to happen. Right? So plus 2 to plus 3. Final minus initial value is 1. So the value comes out to be 1 here. Right? So 1 electron is lost in the oxidation reaction. Similarly, the reaction which will be taking place at cathode. You know, at cathode, what happens? Reduction. At cathode, what happens? Reduction. Try to understand. Oxidation state here is plus 6. Here it is plus 3. So plus 6 to plus 3. Decrease in the oxidation state. Reduction. Gain of electrons. So I would say when Cr2O7 dinegative, when Cr2O7 dinegative will be getting converted into Cr tri positive. Definitely this Cr2O7 dinegative will be gaining some electrons. Now how many? Plus 6 to plus 3. Change is 3. 3 is the change in the oxidation state for one atom of chromium. But I have two atoms. So 3 to the 6. So it will be gaining some 6 electrons and at the end it will be getting converted into 2 times Cr tri positive because you have got 2 chromium. Right? Now tell me one thing. Are the electrons balanced? The electrons are not balanced yet. Okay? 6 and this is 1. So multiply this particular reaction by 6. So this has to be 6 times. This has to be 6 times. This has to be 6 times. Now the electrons are balanced. After balancing the electrons, what you need to do? Just add the reactions. When you add the reaction, 6 and 6 got cancelled. The net reaction has to be 6 times Fe di positive aqueous plus what? Plus Cr27, Cr2O7 di negative aqueous. It gives 6 times Fe tri positive aqueous. And with this, I'll be writing 2 times Cr tri positive aqueous. Tell me one thing how many moles of electrons got exchanged? I would say 6 moles of electrons got exchanged in the net cell reaction. Can we write the expression for QC? Before writing the expression for QC, Check it out. Is the reaction balanced or not? The reaction is not balanced yet. It is time to balance the reaction first, right? It is time to balance the reaction first. On the left side, how many oxygen we have? Seven. On the right side, there is no oxygen. So right side is oxygen deficient. So add seven water molecules on right side. Right? How many hydrogen? 14. So on this side, you'll be adding 14 H positives. Perfect. Now the reaction is balanced. Now it's time to write the expression for QC. How do we write the expression for QC? Start with the product. It's an aqueous form. So use the term concentration. So concentration of Fe tri positive raised power 6. Similarly, it's going to be concentration of Cr tri positive raised power stoichiometric equation. That's true. It's a liquid form. Nothing to do with this. Divide by. Again, use the concentration of Fe di positive raised power 6. Concentration of Cr2 O7 di negative. Raised power stoichiometric equation, that's one. And here, it's going to be concentration of H positive raised power 14. So this is how you are going to write the expression for QC as well. Right? Is this clear? Quickly, people. One question I'll be giving you as the homework. You are going to let me know the number of moles of electrons exchanged in the net cell reaction. Okay? In the comments. In the comments once the session ends. Okay? And tell me, let me tell you one more thing. On Tuesday, 6 p.m., day after tomorrow, there is one more session of the chapter electrochemistry. You have to be there on time, right? On this channel itself. The ones who have not subscribed to the channel yet, do subscribe to the channel as well. Okay? Perfect. For example, the cell is like this. Platinum solid. 
this is SN di positive, SN plus 4, salt bridge, Cr2O7 di negative, Cr tri positive, this is platinum solid. This is the cell which I am giving you. Try to write every single thing related to this particular cell. Write the net, the net cell reaction, N value as well as QC. Okay. And do let me know the answers in the comment section of this particular video. So dear students, every single parameter, is it clear or not? Is it clear or not? Do let me know in the comment section at the end. Did you get every single thing? Okay. Do let me know in the comment section at the end, not in the chats, the chat box, right? I'm telling you, do write in the comment section at the end, whether you got all the concepts which I taught or not. Perfect. Perfecto, people. Perfecto. Yeah. So the first session is done and it's okay, Narmada. It's okay. It's okay. Don't spam from now onwards because I get frustrated when somebody spams. Right? Either he lives or I live. Yeah. Perfect people. Sir, I need your WhatsApp number. You're not supposed to ask the WhatsApp numbers publicly, right? Alright guys, hello, I'll be taking leave. I'll see you guys day after tomorrow. Till then you take care. God bless you all and love you all people. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.